What's up guys, Nightingale here. Welcome back to another Intermediate Traveler's Guide video. Today, we're gonna be talking about Advent side story in general. While today we are technically gonna be doing nature's decay, uh, decline and decay, uh, what I wanna do is, I know we've done the Kiss of Frost one before, but what I think is, I would rather update it and let this be the actual Advent guide. I think uh, we can now make things a little bit cleaner and talk to you about mechanics and really go in a little bit more. Now that we've had three of these things, this is going to be kind of the base ground. So if you guys end up wanting um, one for each as they roll around, we can do that. But for right now, I want to use this as a general base for um, the intermediate people on giving you a general flow of what is to be expected here and really what is um, in store. So first off, what we need to probably go ahead and say at the beginning of the video is no, this is not new player friendly content. And I know there are some people upset right now that they cannot participate in this event. But here is my rebuttal to that is not everything should be accessible to new players instantaneously. Which is also why they put in the normal side story running along with this, which right now is Euphine's, um, uh, Euphine's side story. So... There is content there for newer players, but uh, in the case of Advent, this is not for newer accounts. And when I'm talking newer accounts, let's say less than 90 days, anything before that's probably struggling, anything after that's probably manageable depending on what element. Obviously, we've got Broccoli here, so what is uh, Broccoli's worst, or what is uh, the worst nightmare for Broccoli? It's fire. And what is the uh, worst nightmare in the case of um, Disadvantage? water units, which is what most new players have, Wyvern team. So, with this, let's jump in, and I want to start first with the basics of what is Advent Side Story. So, Advent Side Story is basically this. It is a rare event that is brought out, which is used to get um, modification gems, which are used to change substats on your gear. That's the big thing here. That's what everybody's here for. Two, it gives veteran players a challenge content that it's not something super easily and obtainable. I want you to take note of that CP number right there. 1.3 million. Now, I had those CP numbers in Ancient Inheritance with all the buffs. But I don't have those CP numbers without it. So, see that the, the, there are limitations here. Even the whales and the veterans struggle with certain content. And this one arguably is easier than some of the others, but do note that this is not something that is just easily able to walk in and clear. Most newer players are going to end up residing probably in hard, which is fine. There is no real advantage or disadvantage to it. Then, Hell, where most players are probably going to spend their time farming. It's a little bit slow of a grind, but a little bit better reward overall and time efficiency, which we'll show you here in a little bit. And then Epic Heller for the people who really want the challenge. Great. There's nothing wrong with that. So this is an event that we're going to be getting the special currency. Now they do have uh, reputation rewards, which let's go ahead and talk about these real quick. Is you can see here, you've got purse clearing stage. And the one thing we want to draw your attention to right here, even though we haven't talked about rewards. And this is what really catches people off guard is with what we're about to talk about. This is where the fifth bookmark is. People going, oh my gosh, smile gates trolling. They're only giving four. No, it's right here. Just beat the content and you, you get the reward. All right, but yeah, look at this. It's You get bookmarks, you're getting mo random modification gems, greater modification gems, may we add, and Molagora. Awesome, that could be more, but hey, look, we're already getting two for this currency. All right, so let's jump into the exchange shop and talk about it. So the exchange shop, I'm just gonna go ahead and warn you, is it's, it's, it's effort. There is a lot of currency that has to go into this. This is a very deep event. Now, yes, we are given two weeks to beat this, so... There is light at the end of the tunnel here. Especially when I bring up the sheet here in a minute, you'll see that light. But let's walk through the, the rewards here. And this is typically, this is, we can say that this is the shop. This hasn't changed except for a few different things. You're going to get Molagoras, which is great. The epic artifact charms, never can turn those down. Reforged material chests, thank you, we really need these. Um, bookmarks, which is great. Gifts of Luck, which are the friendship boxes, totally worth. The penguins are really, really good, especially that these are the epic penguins so these things are massive in exp 
Then you have uh, random modific greater modification gems. You will want to come through and buy all of these. Um, because this is super, super advantageous to your account because these are graders. So this is the best enhancement. Then you have the rare currency of the event. So this is one of the few events where you actually have to buy the rare currency. Now, Epic Hell will loot the currency, but for most of us who don't want to put in the effort, this is as far as you're going to go. You also are able to get one Earth Connection. So this will allow you to get a guaranteed four or five star Earth Hero. And then this is the four heroes or the four tickets for the Moonlight Connection. Now, let's go ahead and bring up expectations here. This is a 70% chance, I believe, is what it is, for a three-star, uh, and then it's down to uh, good luck. It's a three-star. But some of you are going to walk away with four stars that you really want, and some of you are going to walk away with five stars. Bless RNG. May, may the odds forever be in your favor that you walk away with the ML5 of your dreams. All right. Now... When it comes to these, you're going to have to either pick one group or you're going to have to pick one of each for two of these. You're only going to be given enough currency if you do not farm Epic Hell to buy two of these chests. Now, these rotate depending on which advent is here. Currently, we have Pen, Defense, Speed, Lifesteal, um, Resist, and uh, Hit Set. People complained like no other that speed was not available in the last one so they've definitely listened and they brought speed in while personally i say everybody needs to sit down and wait their turn i'm okay if this is the one that they constantly put in because honestly it's the one that everybody's going to need to modify something at some point on their gear for me i think with what i'm going to do is i'm torn between picking the lifesteal and the resist ones and the only reason is is because i can get pen set on um expeditions so I don't really see the value here, especially with the rotation about to change over. Probably at the end of the month, we're probably going to have a rotation change. So that's going to bring pen set back. Defense, while it's cool, I don't have enough defense gear to justify it. I don't care about speed gear. I already still have a ton of gems waiting for that. But here's one that I can't really get a hold of, and that's lifesteal. And I've got lifesteal gear that needs to be rolled off. Plus, I'm also thinking about resist is also kind of unique with some soul weavers that I'm building. So I'm going to wait to buy these at the end. And then hit set for those of you who are trying to build some effectiveness units. Units is, this is definitely pretty good and then you finish off your currency down here with gold now the next thing I want to bring up is this spreadsheet I worked on this for you guys today on stream and I want to cover this because this is gonna share some light and again what we teach here is efficiency and well this is where most of the uh, calculations come in now let's go ahead and talk about this is been calculated off of hell difficulty so what you're seeing here is the entire shop of what the currencies are, how much it actually costs, and then how much in total you need, and then how much energy is it going to take. Because I know for newer players, one of the big things here that you are going to be struggling with is going, my gosh, there's so much stuff I have to buy, and this takes so long, this is going to drain a lot of energy. All right, well, let's break this down and take it in, take it in and buy bite-sized pieces. And this is what we'll dissect this and so that you're not going, you literally are blowing my brain with numbers. Okay, so let's look right up here and start with hard and let's walk you through this. So it takes 15 energy to run it. It's going to give you 67 currency and it's going to be an average of it's the average of showing you it's 4.6 or 4.46 repeating to, of, of um, currency per energy spent. Now, why this is important is so that you can see the differences. Now, the total amount of energy, if you're going to run this on hard, on hard, and assuming you get no procs, which there is a special proc drop, occasionally that you will see, where you won't get a modification gem, but you will get an extra currency proc, which will drop this number down. I am not calculating those odds, and nor do I feel like spending the time to calculate those odds, so we're going to base it on as if you get nothing. But you're, you should hopefully come out less in the end. Now... The total amount of energy you're going to need if you're farming this on normal and get no drops, you will need 2,879 energy to buy out the entire shop. That's a lot of energy when you think about it, but now let's break this down into a little bit, again, bite-sized pieces. This is going to be a total of 192 runs, assuming you get no drops. 
In total, it will take you 4.2 days worth of daily energy. Now, why I have this calculated out like this is due to this number right here, which is 684 energy. This is the average if you have a max level account that has the 154 energy i'm assuming you're able to charge this up around twice a day with all available daily energy in the game so this is through ads this is through spending conquest points your friendship points you name it if there's daily energy and yes that is i don't think i count i think i count guild but i don't count all of the guild for this um but it's around 684 energy is what the rough calculation was. This is a calculation based off of the original one. So I just remember I had it there so I didn't feel like going back and adding it up. So for you guys doing it on hard, it will take 4.2 days of your entire daily energy to be able to do this. So now that you see it in a, in a, in a more compressed way, you go, okay, it's not as bad as I think because all you gotta do is spend all of your daily energy into it. Now, yes, you still have things you probably need to do and grind and work on, but let's break this down even further so now let's assume you can farm the hell stage so it's going to cost you 24 energy per entry but you're going to be gaining 135 per um entry and this is i believe with the event pat at, uh, added in i believe is what this is calculating and you're going to get 5.625 energy or currency per energy spent now you can see that it's going to cost you around 2,000 energy to run this, 2,286 energy to run this. It'll take you around 152 runs to complete, and it'll take you around 3.3 days to run this event out. Now, here's something to consider. So I wanted to show you guys the difference between normal and hell. In normal, you're going to spend 592 basically 593 more energy to farm it in hard. You're going to take about 40 more runs to run it on hard. And it's going to basically, it's adding on 0.8 of a day worth of energy to farm it on hard. Well, I also decided to get down a little bit dirtier for you guys, because obviously there are some people like me who will want to absolutely blast this out as fast as possible. So, if you would like to know how many leaves it costs, if, assuming you are not spending any daily energy and it's only leaves, it's going to take you uh, 36 leaves to completely max out this event, as well as it will take uh, 29 leaves to max out this event on, on Hell. So, the next thing I want to bring up is... For those players who now do not want to do this, this is why I have this sheet made like this, is so that you guys can understand breaking this down even further i give you here the total energy is the only, i was trying not to it, it was a long text and energy is a nice little abbreviation for it uh, energy spent is this i break it down so that you guys can see each individual energy cost per run so if you're just going after the Molagoras, it's 60 set or 68 energy to get the Molagoras. If you are after the Epic Charms, it's 160 energy to get those. It's 170, 178 energy to get the Reforge Chests. It's 32 energy to get the Covenant Bookmarks. 356 energy to get the gifts. Now, something that I want to point out here, and this is where a lot of people tend to haze over these. I mentioned earlier that this is the... These are very high value. Now, why I say this is because of this. The 20 gifts you get here, for the 356 energy you get, you cannot get the friendship level off of that unit that high for 356 energy. These things are super high value, and people sleep on these things all the time. Yes, it is 356 energy to buy those things, but consider this. What is friendship? Friendship is free Molagoras. Every time you friendship 10 a unit, that is that is three free Molagoras. Or in the case for some people, it's a refund. If they've plus 15 their unit, that's three Molagoras back in their account. So I highly, highly, highly value these gifts. Again, it looks expensive, but I promise you, you cannot level a unit in that 355 and get that same energy. I believe 20 is near enough to get you into Friendship 8, Friendship 9 territory, if I remember correctly. The penguins are also high value here because, again, they are the epic penguins. The amount of 
experience that you would gain penguin farming uh, in normal AP is nowhere near the 300 energy you're putting into this. So these epic penguins are worth way more than that. So I'm definitely picking them up, but this is obviously where people have to look at it because that is 302 energy that they may not want to spend. But right now we have the custom, currently in the game, we have the custom group summons going on. People are summoning a lot of units. Guess what summoning needs? Leveling up their units. Those penguins are a lot of value. Now, next up is the uh, greater modification gems. They all cost 88 point, or basically 89 energy to get each uh, set of these. Make sure you buy these because these are the greater versions, which if it ends up being a dud of something you just absolutely don't want, you are able to break that down, which these break down for the highest value of five cores, I believe is what it is, per one gem, where the white ones or the blue ones break down one to one which is horrible return, but hey, it, it is what it is. I at least said buff it to two, and I would I would, wouldn't stop complaining, but it is what it is. So it's gonna take you 88 energy per one of these, and I do recommend that you go through and buy out most of these, especially because some of these do not, and I repeat, do not show up in expos as like selectable chests. So getting the random ones now, definitely worth the investment. Plus something else you need to consider too, is if we are talking expeditions real quick, um, Expeditions cost, I believe, around 20, 18 to 20 ish energy to do uh, those. And um, you're not guaranteed an epic gem. So do keep that in mind. Now, the last of the normal branch um, twig, whatever it is, currencies are the leaf cycle and the earth bookmarks. So these are obviously very expensive because of what they are, but these are definitely something you want to look at picking up. And I show you. Um, how much current or how much energy here is needed when it comes to the um a leaf cycle here's the thing as i stated earlier it is a choice you're gonna have to make unless you're doing epic hell which most of you guys that are watching the intermediate traveler's guide probably will not be able to do right away maybe the next rotation you guys will be able to do it but for the first one you've got choices to make and that really comes down to do you give up the bookmarks are you really going to give up a chance at an ML5? I know you guys. I know you guys really well. You will take that You will take that gamble. If it said 0.00001% chance, you're literally going to come up and say, so you're telling me there's a chance. It's really what's, that's really what happens. So we're all going to be getting the bookmarks. I'm guilty of it too. I'll be doing it. But then I'm looking at this. Do I get one of each or am I going to get one of the other? My personal two I'm going to be going looking at is either getting one of the resist and one of the lifesteal or I may end up getting both lifesteals depending on where I'm at on my account when I go check out their gear. So depending on what I have to mod will determine what I need to buy here. And that's really my advice that I want to give you guys. Depending on what you are buying and what you are building will determine what you buy out of this. That's really the best case scenario to tell you guys. So, I think I've melted your brains long enough with math. Um, I will move out of the way real quick just to give you guys a second. So, if you want to screenshot this on your phones that you can have this so you can save this for future reference, please go ahead, grab it real quick. And uh, let's jump in and actually talk more about Advent itself now that we've talked about the shop. So, for the sake of the video, I'm only going to be doing hard just so that we can get a faster run through. So, things are going to blow up a little bit easier than what they should be because my team is tuned for hell, not hard. So, let's jump in and uh, talk to you guys about the um, layout here. So, some people tend to get a little confused about this system. They think that they have to use the same elements or they have to use, um, they can only use fire units because it is a grass, uh, it's a grass side story. Well, in this case, really what this comes down to is you can use... I wouldn't recommend it, but you can you could technically use water if you really think your water unit can take the hit. All right, but outside of that, honestly, you can use everything but water in this case or ice. Well, I, it's a water drop, but they call it ice. Let's be real. So, in this case, what we're saying is is you can use two darks, you can use two lights, two grass, two fire, rock and roll. Now, in this case. Most of us actually do have a good bit of fire units probably laying around. Just some of us may not have them built or not. Now, what I'm not going to do is give you guys teams because I don't know what you guys have built. 
and I don't know what you guys are willing to build to do this. So this is what I've used, and now you can use my thought processes to help you guys build. Now sure, I can answer questions as best as I can on maybe a suggestion here or there, but hopefully I can cover this in the guide that will give you guys the knowledge for even future one of these. It's the same mentality that we have to look at. We have to look at the phases of the boss, which is what each one of these teams represents each phase, and then what does each phase have in a mechanic wise that we're trying to beat. So. Each phase, this has not changed at all through any of the advents yet. So through the water, the fire, and now the grass version, they are always speed is team one, health is team two, attack is team three. Great. That's established. So here, as far as the elements, let's go ahead and talk about this. As you see right here, there are elements across each one of these. Now, if I was to bring over another unit, in this case, let's just take Mascot Hazel off here for a second managed team, and I go grab another, uh, let's say I grab a Grass Soul Weaver, we pop Destina here, you can see that that now turns to Grass. So it doesn't matter which element has the um, two or three advantage, it's just that you have the advantage is all you need. It gives you no other benefits if it's Grass that gets it or that Fire gets it, you just want the advantage to be there. Well, in case of this, I actually have a reason for Mascot Hazel being here, even though we could do this without her, but we're going to run it with her. So, before we can really get in and talk to you guys about why my teams are set up like this, let's go in and jump in and talk about the boss itself. So, the boss has three stages, and there's a mechanic stage, or, or a trick, a gimmick for each one. Now, some of you that have played these before, you understand that you gotta read. And if you played Ancient Inheritance, you learn you gotta read. There are, there's a reason why they put this here, and it's just not so you go in blindly. So let's go through and cover the three phases, and I'm going to read this off for you. So for the phase one, decaying naturus, um, decreasing decreases attack and critical hit chance of the hero with the highest attack, inflicts an extra damage, inflicts extra damage on all enemies inflicted with stigma, which is a debuff. Heroes with the highest attack must be able keyword must be able to use a non-attack skill, and heroes who can dispel debuffs are needed in order to dispel the stigma. Since um, the Black Ash Sylvia, uh, Sylvia, Sylvia, I have no idea actually how you would say that, has the, high, since Black has the highest health, it is beneficial to control them with uh, effects such as stun or sleep. Okay, in this case, for what we're doing here with team number one, I've learned by playing and seeing with my eyes that, okay, there's another mechanic here. They're healing the boss. Well, since the mechanic revolves around that non-attack skill, Violet's more here for just damage. Let's be real. Because I know Sermia is my heaviest hitting uh, fire unit. I figured, let's go ahead and use her here because she is the unit. We've messed around with High Young and... Um, with High Young here, but I prefer... I prefer Sermia in this spot for my team. This definitely works out better. Um, but she has the non-attack skill, which grants her the greater attack buff. And she's also got the uh, unhealable on the S1 if we're not doing a ton of damage, which here we're going to probably kill it with the S3. Let's be real. Uh, it's on a rage set. And then Mascot Hazel is here for the attack, just to make sure that um, we can cleanse, we get the attack buff, as well as uh, the unhealable off of her S1 for the harder difficulties. Violet is solely here for damage. Okay? Now, Team 2. Phase 2. When attacked by an enemy who has a buff, Decaying Naturus increases its combat readiness and activates an extra attack. Also... Dust mushrooms that appear when the boss monster uses a powerful self-destruct. This this catches me off guard. Okay. The dust mushroom that appear with the boss monster use a powerful self-destruct ability. Okay. That's just how I read it. Therefore, it is recommended to use heroes whose skills targets all enemies in order to defeat them. It is beneficial to uh, formulate a team of heroes that can inflict various debuffs instead of those who grant buffs. Okay, now in this is basically Team AoE. 
And for this specific boss, this is what this mechanic is. Now in the next advent, is this gonna be the same mechanic? No, but you need to read and then assess your team. In this case, uh, Tamron's here for healing. And tier him on, you know, just tier him on. Unfortunately, I do not want to level up my Tenny. And this is partially my issue of just not, well, I have other priorities, let's put it that way. So in this case, for me, Tenny is the reason why I'm failing the uh, Hell Runs when I do fail. It's just because she doesn't have enough health to take on the damage here. Uh, but she's got AoE defense break, she can sleep, and she's built pretty well for this. She's basically one of my Expo characters, if that's what we want to get down to. She's basically on her Expo build. Fire Mercedes is on her PvP build here, and she's AoE. And she's on counter, so we've got a lot of damage incoming as long as we get the counter. If we don't counter, yeah, things kind of suck. But, it is what it is. That's also why my uh, combat power is so low here, is because Tamron's on scuff gear. Because again, I'm forever team scuffs Tamron. Because if she does the job, why do we want to put good stuff on her? And then Tenny isn't six star. That would fix this. Okay, now let's go in and talk about boss number three, or phase number three. Decaying Naturist grants itself, uh, grants itself with buffs. This doesn't. Somebody needs to go back to English class. Decaying Naturist grants itself with buffs when attacked, uh, while having multiple debuffs. Deals huge damage against enemies with less than two buffs. Therefore, it is beneficial to formulate a team of heroes that can grant various buffs instead of those that inflict debuffs. Since uh, the boss monster will use an attack when attacked by an extra attack and counterattacks, it's recommended to use heroes that who do not use such skills. Okay. First off. They need to start hiring people who actually speak English as their first language to translate to, or to clean up the English here. This, this, this hurts my brain. Anyway, so let's jump in to this team. Now, the thought process here is Hai Young is a monster and basically Hai Young carries this. And this is the same for, um, for, uh, Hell as well. Because she ignores defense 100%, you don't even need the defense break. She's going to hit it for just straight HP value, which is what makes her very good for this stage. Um, my elf felt that you see here is basically to give target for Hai Young. It is my Katie's 13 one shot elf felt running Song of Stars on her build. And then Malim is my PvP Malim just here for uh, cheering her on and doing uh, extra damage. Uh, so for the case of this video, I'm going to leave their gear exactly the same as it stands now. We're going to jump in and now go over this. Actually, wait. There's something else I should probably show you. Something actually really important that, you know, I learned at least with um, Ancient Inheritance is to check this page. This page also gives you a good idea of what can and cannot be done. And this is what saved certain abilities of being able to speed run certain aspects of ancient inheritance was reading this so this is always something that you should come and check out so it shows you its immune effects so it's immune to silence poison provoke stigma stun restrict sleep and redirect provoke so all the fun stuff minus defense break you can't use and target also we should go ahead and just go over the passive so that you guys can understand what is going on here so we're going to read these left to right top to bottom so, uh, you've got Restriction Spell. After being attacked, grants a stackable increased attack and speed to the caster. This is their, like, go-to trick. It's on everything. Receives only 50% of the effect of, increase, of increases in damage proportional to, proportional to the max health. Basically, what they're saying is anything that does damage like Commander Lorena and Daydream Joker, they're only getting 50% of the value. This is basically Katie's. Reduces the effect of combat readiness increases granted to all enemies by 50%. In Epic Hell, which none of us are going to be doing that, let's be real. But in Epic Hell, uh, difficulty at the start of the battle activates... Uh, Retaliation mana, unique effect, and counterattack mana, unique effect, which are those two right there, which is a basically abyss level passive saying that it's going to retaliate and it's going to counterattack. It's going to suck. Okay. So, 
Moving on, uh, decomposed uh, branch attacks two enemies, decreasing combat readiness by 30 and 75% chance. 30 by 30 percent and a 75 percent chance to inflict stigma for three turns before increasing combat readiness of a random ally by 20 percent and then stigma is the decrease uh amount recovered and combat readiness then you have uh destructive vine curse so this is that ability that you need to be able to cleanse off ignores hit chance and uh, effect resistance of the enemies uh, with the highest attack and inflicts decaying uh, curse unique effect uh, for two turns uh, for two turns before activating dark branch this uh, skill starts at the battle with no cooldown and then dark branch attacks all enemies decreasing combat readiness by 15% with a 75% chance to inflict stigma for three turns and hell or above combat readiness is decreased by an additional 15% but the way you get this off is just use your non-attack skill and it's gone Phase 2, after being attacked, when the health is 70% or less, uh, sacrifices uh, all enemies except for the caster before entering Phase 2. Health cannot fall below 70%. Basically, this is just that tack that you're going to see as soon as we um, pop it. And this also happens going into Phase 3. And then uh, Black Ash Spirit takes a turn at the first... Um, takes a turn first at the start of the battle and uses destructive vine curse before summoning two uh black ash uh sylvia's 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 Sil i have no idea uh they can be summoned once per battle those are um at the very beginning or that's yeah that's at the very beginning uh at the end of the uh at the end of someone's turn inflicts an additional damage equal to 10 percent of the enemy's current health uh on the enemy inflicted with stigma so the whole point here is they're trying to get stigma laid on you so for those newer players yes you will need to make sure you are cleansing this but if you have basically what i'm doing you can literally ignore this mechanic completely so let's jump in make sure that whenever these come up that you do check out this and just click on him get to this menu make sure you see all the stuff because this is where people go oh i thought i could well if you'd read this you would have known all right well let's jump in and see what's gonna happen here we're gonna let this thing go on auto because i know it's safe and secure and we're gonna walk you through basically everything here so as it tells you it's gonna attack first it now applies the curse there are the black ash dudes tree monsters that i absolutely can, can't say their name to save my life um we got the stigma cleansed off which is easy we've got uh buffs violet in this case is um really over geared for this i'm gonna be honest um, in my in my opinion, this is a very easy. Um, this is a very easy phase, especially with the mascot Hazel Cheese, because it gives her greater attack buff, and she doesn't need to. Do it. But if you actually struggle, you will need to do the S three, do the S two. Okay, so phase two is about AOE. Um, the big thing here is that's why uh, Tenebria, or yeah, Tenebria is here, is to get the. Uh, AOE uh, defense break and let Mercedes do her job which is do tons of damage and then um, Tenebria is here for the stripping of any buffs and the AOE def defense break as well as AOE damage in general it's not this easy on hell but you can see that with good quality units you are able to chip this down relatively easy and relatively fast and I believe this should take us into the next phase right here there we go all right next phase the next phase is again just a dps check that's really what these are always about and it always has been uh, so in this case we are going to basically we're giving high young the attack buff which is exactly what she needs we're gonna let her do her s3 and most likely it'll do most of this thing's health with malim coming in and finishing it up at the very end yeah just right there at the end just enough to finish it off and there we go now that is looks a lot easier than what some of you are going to be dealing with but that's just because of where i'm at with gear these runs take significantly longer when i am running um hell mode now the last thing i'll do is because in case you guys are wanting to see i will quickly go over all of my units here that we used in this run so as you can see uh there is the pet bonus so that means the pet was uh calculating into this so if you guys do have an event uh, currency pet at whatever currency level it is at least be using that because it will count to this which does cut your grind down so if you don't have a pet your grind will be slightly longer than what i showed you earlier 
as you can see, you're going to be getting uh, lesser and greater modification gems as drops here, as well as a bit of gold. I think I have the gold buff popped, so this is why this is a little bit higher than normal. This is absolutely nothing of gold, but hey, it's at least something. And if you want to see real quick the VIPs of the... Um, of the damage dealing it's right here obviously each one has their own unique um value depending on what's going on so here we go all right last up we're going to show you the units now remember this is just based off of my account what i'm doing and where i'm at your mileage will vary i'm not telling you guys to go out here and build these units to this but here's what i'm using and where they're from so, first off, this is my Cadiz 13, um, and basically Gollum 13 one-shot Sermia. Uh, we've got her on Rage Crit set, and nothing's changed here since I've done my one-shot guides. Uh, maybe a little bit higher stat overall, but we're running. The only thing that I did change last night before we got started was I put her on the um, exclusive equipment that has the 25% uh, chance to... Um, do the extra attack because going into the uh hell mode she will use her s3 and then use her s1 so i'm in the fight a lot longer so i want that extra chance of applying the unhealable in this case uh so running daydream joker on her i'm not changing her build i'm not putting anything on her other than just swatch swapping around the exclusive equipment Next up was, uh, next up is High Young. This is my High Young build. You can see it's on a Broken Set Revenge Set. Um, just here for stats, I'm running my, P this is basically my PvP build. Uh, she won't, re in, in Hell Mode, she gets more benefit off of the uh, Elves Fist than she does here. Uh, but for me, I'm not going to go re-gear her because I'd rather keep the stats of Elves Fist than do that. Next up is my one-shot Elfelt. So this is the same Elfelt I use inside of Katie's 13 one-shot. Uh, she is imprinted. Do note that. Um, so we are giving them the attack buff here just off of that. But this may or may not be unobtainable to some of you guys. And the reason being is just, again, this is what I had to build for Katie's 13. It was just enough bulk to, bulk to live through it. But I could definitely build one a lot faster than this. But this is just because it's my Katie's 13 one-shot. That's why it, it is. Next up is Mercedes. She's on immunity counter. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason other than this is what I told Ask Fribbles could I get, and it said yes, and I've been using it ever since. Uh, obviously, the curse of 50-50 crit chance, but uh, I can't find gear right now that will replace any of this to make her equal or better than this. So she is the Episode 3 Mercedes, which has the uh, Magic for Friends artifact, so you will need to at least beat Episode 3 in its entirety to have access to this Mercedes at this level. Uh, the counter gear here actually helps out a lot in um, Hell, just because if we get those counters with those defense breaks, it helps speed up the run a lot. Malim is just here on her average PvP build. This I haven't even reforged her gear. I use her every now and then um, in Guild Wars, but... Right now, I don't find enough value in it. I mean, she is on counter pen, so she will absolutely smack something. Uh, and the, it looks a lot better when it's reforged. But right now, I just don't I don't have the reforge mats to take the time to go m completely deck her out. If I wanted to speed these up, I could totally take her off of uh, Tag of Hell's book. But I just, I haven't. Um, let's see here. So, Mascot Hazel is the other one that we haven't talked about, which is right here. Uh, Mascot Hazel is on my Expedition build. This is just what I use to farm uh, Expeditions. It's really all it is for Grass Expo. Uh, to be able to give the greater attack buff. Uh, it's not particularly that we have to have it on Revenge. It's just this is the gear I had and got the rough stats that I needed because I wanted the effectiveness and decent speed. Um, so that's that. And then, of course, Tamron's on her Forever Trash build. I just promote this because why not? If she works on garbage can gear, it saves good gear for other people. But I 100% understand building Tamron on some absolutely absurd gear. I've seen some insane built ones. Um, let's see. We need to talk about Violet real quick. And Violet is on his PvP build. He is on Lifesteal Pen. And I can tell you that this gear is pretty good for where he's at. Um... It's not often you're going to get 310 crit damage with 3,000 attack. Um, I see some with very high attack, lower crit damage. 
I have it's just whatever the uh, MCD came out to on Fribbles is why he's based on this to be able to still have around 1200 defense and 13,000 plus HP is what I was after so uh, Moonlight Dreamblade may not technically be the best tech here but um, I'd rather have the potential shot at uh, getting a attack buff you could use other artifacts here um, but this is again just what I'm using because it is and I think that's it. I think that covers all of the units. Let me just go in and check real quick. I don't think I've missed anybody. It's been a long day, and uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, let's just jump in. Ah, Tenebria. That's the last one we want to talk about. I hate it when it does this. Okay, so uh, Tenebria is also on expedition duty, so we just have her on a broken speed set, uh, with, and I brought over Violin so that she could strip the buff, so if you heard me talking about stripping, that's why she's able to strip, is because of me using Violin here. Uh, the exclusive equipment, I think in this case for me, I'm using the cooldown one just because I summoned it, so hey, it is what it is. Just needed the effectiveness, and... My runs would be a lot more successful if this was 6-star, but I don't want to spend the resources to 6-star this or mold this out yet all the way. So, those are... That does... Yeah, that covers everybody. So, again, this is a... This is very specifically designed around nature's decline and decay, but I'm also wanting to use this as a better foundation now going forward for Advent so that when I recommend people... This is the better overall guide. If we decide that we end up needing to do this, then sure, I'll make one, or I'll redo at least the Frost one for better standards, and we'll redo as, or just release new ones as they come along. If you guys feel like we need to really talk about this in a greater sense, sure, we can do that. But for right now, I'm going to use this as the standard from here on out, so hopefully this is what we'll use to get you guys educated on how to do Advent side story, no matter what element it is or what the mechanics are, this should give you the basic understanding of what what is expected, how much this thing's going to cost, how to set up teams, where to look for the information, and then test. That's really what this all comes down to. So if you guys have any questions, I'll try my best in the comment section below to help you guys out. Again, it's going to be hard to build teams for you guys because I don't really know your gear standards, and it's going to be really hard to communicate a lot of that. But um, try to use the guide as best as possible to navigate st strategies. That's really what it comes down to is thinking about what your units do, and if they were geared, what could they potentially do for you. Um, so, yeah, any questions, I'll try to help you out as best as I can. Um, and we'll try to make this as easy as a process for the newer players as possible to try to make this better for you guys. Again, I'm sorry that you guys aren't able to jump in here, but it, it is what it has to be. So you guys take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.